for this trick, I can start off by giving the deck a little shuffle like this, and then I can follow up with a couple of cuts. <clears throat> I would explain to the participant that for this effect, I'm going to have them select a card, but I am going to do it in a bit of a different way than I usually would. So what I'm going to do is ripple my thumb down the side of the deck, and all you have to do is call out stop whenever you would like. Let's say they call out stop here. If the participant would like, they can go further down the deck. It doesn't matter. So let's say they choose to. They call out stop here. And they say that they are good at this spot and they don't want to go any further. What I could do now is go ahead and show the participant the card they selected and have them remember it because I don't want to see the card they selected. So once the participant is uh, satisfied with remembering their card, I would explain that we are going to leave it sticking out of the deck where they called stop. All they have to do is push the card in the deck, and with one cut, hopefully I can get your card to jump to the top of the deck. So let's say I go ahead, give the cards one cut, and I should have got your card, the Ten of Diamonds, your selection. Uh, no. You are telling me the Ten of Diamonds is not your card. Okay. What was your card? You can say your card out loud. The Nine of Diamonds. Well, we were pretty close with the Nine and Ten. And then I did get the suit right. Hmm. The Nine of Diamonds. This is the Ten of Diamonds. Let's try this out. All I have to do, you can see your 10 is right there. If I go ahead and give it a little rub, oh, that is still the 10 of diamonds. Hmm. Well, instead of rubbing the entire card, let's only rub some of it. And you can see, even though the 10 is still there, the rest of the diamonds change into your nine of diamonds. And I could also hand this card out for inspection. And that is the effect. If you would like to learn how to do this, please stick around for the tutorial. <clears throat> Before I get into the tutorial, there are a couple of things I should go over. First of all, the cards I am using, I'm sure all of you know what they are, but for those of you that don't, they are just blue bicycle standards. I don't have a deck review on these because, like I mentioned earlier, I'm sure everyone knows what bikes are, but for you out there that would like a deck review on the bikes, Leave a comment in the comment section, and I will make a deck review on the bikes. Now, getting into the this card, this is actually a gimmick card. So as you can see, it's a ten of diamonds both ways, and then it has nine singular diamonds, and they are in such a formation that it actually... Uh, well, you can actually see the number 9 and then diamond, so the 9 of diamonds. I got this card from this Bicycle Gaff deck, which I actually received as a gift from Card Mat Tutorials. I have a deck review on this deck, and then I will also link in the description, along with the de uh, deck review of these cards, to Card Matt Tutorials channel, please go and subscribe to him. Now, if you don't have a gimmick card, what you could do is take, for example, a blank card. 
you could write, and you could really do anything you would like, or if you wanted, you could go ahead and put your 10 of diamonds, and then you could do this 9 of diamonds formation. So there are a couple of things you can do. And then this was just an original effect I threw together. If it's out there, leave a comment in the description, or in the comment section, I should say, and then I can give proper credit. So for this, there is a slight setup. So first of all, whatever your gimmick card is, in this case, it is a blue bicycle. The deck I'm using, I'm going to make sure it matches, okay? So with the three cards down, they all look the same. You don't want one to be a red back and then the other two to be blue. That won't look very good. So, for your setup, how you're going to do this is simple. You're going to first put down the first card you're going to force, and this force card is going to be revealed at the end, in this case the nine of diamonds. So there goes the nine. I'm then going to put the gimmick card down, and then I'm going to put the other card it shows, the ten of diamonds. So when you do that little color change, because these are the same, okay, it's not going to look like anything happened, as you can see there. So when I showed you this 10, the first time, I ended up with this 10. This is your setup. This goes right on top of the deck, and you are set to go. So you can start off the trick with any false shuffles and or cuts you would like. Just leave the three cards on top of the deck in the order they are already in. In the uh, description, I will link some false shuffles and cuts. After you have done that, you're going to force the nine. Once again, you're going to want to force the nine in a way that keeps the gimmick and then the card underneath it on top as well. And then you're going to end up losing the force card in the middle of the deck, which keeps these on top. Any force you would like to do that gets the job done, you can. What I did was the riffle force, or I'm sorry, not the riffle force, the slip force. I may have a tutorial on the slip force, just like the riffle force, and if I do, one of those or both of those will be linked in the description. So for this, a quick overview, in case you don't know, you're going to hold it like this. This is the slip force. So your middle ring and pinky over the top, index curled at the back or the bottom, thumb at the top left side, and you're going to riffle down. You're going to explain you're going to riffle down. They call out stop. Now, you can give them the option, if they so choose, to go further down in the deck. This really won't matter as long as if you do this right. So let's say they say stop here. All you're going to do is come over and grip the packet that isn't held by the thumb. And with these three fingers applying force on this top card, if you apply the force and then grab the rest of the cards and just lift up, okay, that card is going to, you know, slip down or more than one card is going to slip down along with that top card. And then you can show the 9. Now when you do this, you just want the 9 to slip. Because then if your setup will be underneath it. And then you will lose the setup in the middle, which isn't good. So they call out stop. You just lift up. If you're slow about it, you may slip more than one card. And then you can show it to them. So in real time, it may look like this. 
I'm going to riffle down the side of the deck. You call out, stop. Stop. Would you like to go further down? Uh, sure. Stop. And then I lift up, which you're not going to show this, but I'm going to show it to you. You have your setup on top, and then you have your nine. So after you did the force, you're going to show the card, and then you're going to have to leave it in the middle, or put it in the middle, but leave the setup on top. So this is why I do the slip force, because you can then hold the top packet, sort of like an ambitious card routine. Thumb at the back, middle ring and pinky at the top. I like to slide the card up. I line up both decks. So now everything is flush. I show this card to them. They push it in. And just like that, your setup is on top. So now you explain that you're going to try to find their card. So you're going to do some sort of false shuffle and or cut that keeps the two cards on top. And those will be linked in the description. After you have done that, you're going to do a double lift and show the second card. Just because this is the normal 10, and you're going to act like the 10 is their card. You don't want to show them the gimmick, obviously. That will ruin everything. So you're going to do your double lift. And I will leave links in the description for the double lift. You act really confident and like you know the 10 is theirs. And if they don't say anything, you can say the 10 was your card, right? And if they say no, then you're going to act you're going to act confused. They should uh say that the 10 isn't their card. So when you do the double lift, if you want, you could uh oh, jeez.